Today's Mercedes-Benz interview of the day brought to you by the boundlessly capable all-electric EQS SUV from Mercedes-Benz. Vehicle all-electric. Feeling is all Mercedes. Learn more at mbusa.com slash EQS dash SUV. The voice of March Madness. Well, he's the voice of many things. CBS, TNT, TBS, Yes Network, Brooklyn Nets, college basketball, NFL, NBA. I think he had the under with uh, Jonte Porter's numbers with the Toronto Raptors as well. He does it all. He's Ian Eagle or Ian Eagle who joins us on the program. Ian, great to talk to you again. I answer to either, sadly, Dan. <laughs> Ian Eagle is a fantastic name. I'm cool with it. Um, do you get recognized for your voice? How often? Yeah, occasionally. Yeah, yeah. P- pizza places, ordering a, a grandma slice. Mm. I might get a head whip around and and say, "Are you Marv Albert?" No, no. <laughs> it's somebody else. <laughs> yes. Was he uh, an idol? Oh yeah, yeah. He was the model for me because I, I thought. He did such a tremendous job of calling the game. He was serious about the game, but he could razz his analysts. He could have a sarcastic line that would just go into the flow of the play-by-play. And then as a viewer or a listener, you'd question, wait, was he serious or was that a joke? I just loved that style and his versatility. I just enjoyed the fact that you could pop him into any situation and it was still going to be him. So growing up, him, Al Michaels, Costas, Brent, Vern Lundquist, those are the guys that, that I really admired and took to in, in the way in which they did their job. How often do you think about the ending or how, mm. you, how you'll call an ending? Like, let's say there's 60 seconds to go. Is there anything? I'll give you, for instance, uh, Marvin works on the show, and Marvin yes. has the call – Uh, how he would call the Duquesne win. Duquesne can do. They pull off the big time upset. Yeah. Yeah. Can do. Yeah. Can do. Yeah. Yeah. Let me get a pen. (laughs) I'm writing these down (laughs) just in case. Uh, Hold on. We got one for Drake as well. Drake. Uh, Yeah. Started from the bottom. Now we're here. Drake pulls off the big time upset in March Madness. No, that's perfect. Yeah. I wouldn't even make an adjustment yeah so though i would take those word for word yes and, and if uh kevin harlan ever six out uh we have his replacement the bucks are on a 9-3 run and pittsburgh and philadelphia wants to talk about it oh, this is, uh, oh, you, you screwed it up i didn't know you were coming to me this is the nba on tnt <laughs> The pressure to perform yeah. in the moment. Yeah. Zach Eady is a god. <laughs> <laughs> I think he is, actually. That's that's accurate. Uh, so how often have you found yourself saying, God, I, you know, I gotta come up with something. Nance does this yeah. all the time. Do I do I come up with something? <laughs> I have not thought about it for one second, to be perfectly honest, because I have no idea who's gonna be in the final four. And it's a legitimate question. I tend to think that I'm going to go pretty simple and be accurate and have enthusiasm. But I don't know. Until I'm in the moment, I I truly don't know. If something strikes me, I'm now more willing to go with it than I was early in my career. I remember my third year doing the tournament. It was 2000. We had Seton Hall and Temple in the second round. And Ty Shine was putting on a show. He was filling in for Shaheen Holloway, who got injured in the first round matchup against Oregon. And the whole time in the second half, I'm thinking, oh, man, this is tailor made. This is one shining moment. (laughs) Shine, shine, shine. (laughs) And I'm, I'm toying with it. I'm going through the mental gymnastics of it. And then we get right down to the wire. And I didn't say it. I thought about, again, I was young. It was my third year doing it. I thought about the reaction. That was cheesy. What, what's that dude doing? And I got caught up in steps uh, along the way that I should never have been concerned with. And from that moment on, truly, because it bothered me so much in the moment, I decided, hey, look, if you feel something, go with it. Trust your instincts and 
odds are if it's genuine, if it's coming from a real place, then the audience will buy it. Well, when I was at Sports Center, you know, we all got caught up in our catchphrases when we're calling highlights. So, like that was more important than the highlight after yes. a while. And then, Fuego. And, yes. and then we kind of had to regroup and go, uh, you know, our job is still to call the action, you know, do yeah. the highlights. And then if you want to sprinkle something in. But it became this yeah. pandemic where everybody had to have a catchphrase. And oh, then you'd have people really. walking around the building at ESPN. Yeah. Uh, they'd be a uh, uh, cowhide joyride. What do you think of that for a home run? <laughs> I'm going, it's terrible. <laughs> it's terrible. It's, it's true. And uh, Craig Kilborn, mutual friend of ours, uh, leaned into that heavily, as we know. Yeah. And I'm not sure anybody, anybody saw a connection between Jumanji, the Robin Williams <laughs> film, and sports. Yet, he went with it, and it did have a following of some sort. But you're right. If you get too crazed by the wordplay, and if it's if it's something that you're workshopping all the time, odds are it's not going to deliver in the moment. If something really does strike me in the moment, I tend to go with it because I feel like if if it's something that I find interesting, there's a pretty good chance that somebody else out there watching the games is going to find it interesting too. He's the voice of March Madness. By the way, how does that sound now that you take <laughs> over for Jim Nance? What was your reaction uh, when you heard that Jim was going to stop doing March Madness? It, it had been a few years in conversation. So there wasn't one phone call that was the end all. It, it was a bit of a process. And I think they were working with Jim to figure out his timing and what made the most sense. Houston last year for him, I know on a personal level, really resonated to, to have this full circle moment and do it in Houston where he attended college, where his career began. So once it was determined that that would be the last one for him, uh, that's when it, it started to become a bit more real for me. It, it's funny, Dan, because I've done so many games it's not like this is a new role in terms of what my responsibilities are. I've done the tournament for 26 years, and I do probably about 100 basketball games a year between college, NBA, local, national. So I just remind myself, do what you do. You're not going to change what you do, how you approach it, how you prepare, the energy that you bring to the event. Of course, the, the stage is a bit larger and it's vast. And I'll be aware of it. I'll be aware of my surroundings. But I would be really surprised if I change the way that that I do the game just because it's the Final Four. If anything, I might end up doing a little bit less because you have really nice pictures and sound. And I think some of the ambient noise is okay. So if I pull back a little bit, that might be more of a conscious decision than to do more than I would normally do. We're talking to Ian Eagle or Ian Eagle. He is uh, the Either. main play-by-play -play voice for um, March Madness. So when you went in to the head of CBS and you said, it's either me or him. <laughs> Wait, yeah. is that how it played out? Yeah. Very uh, Jay Leno, Conan O'Brien. Oh, yeah. uh, just whatever happened in their situation pretty much happened here. Yeah, these could be wonky situations, as we know, uncomfortable, awkward. This one has not been. And I think a lot of it has to do with how many years I've been there and the fact that I've worked literally with everybody that works on this tournament in some form, uh, being with different crews through the years. Uh, this just isn't a out of left field move. Uh, but it does mean something in that the trust that CBS, Turner, the NCAA, I don't take that lightly. That's a that's a real thing. When you get that kind of decision, you you realize that it's not a snap decision. It, it was a lot of parties involved to make this happen. How often do you have the fan behind you who's yelling stuff? And <laughs> at me or at the court? Well, maybe at the court or it affects you. Uh, I put the headset on and not a whole lot affects me. I, I am capable of going to another place. If you take the headset off and you listen 
to the sounds of the people around you, I could see getting swept away in the passion and in uh, some of the uh, untoward attitude that we see. But I just lock in. I, I put that headset on and and I'm just laser focused on on what I have to do. Did you fill out a bracket? No. No, I have not filled out a bracket since 1998. The first year I did the NCAA tournament, I was still working a lot at WFAN Radio and took a lot of pride in the office pool and, and the bracket. So that first year, I fly out to Sacramento to do the games. I have Maryland, I have Arizona, I have Illinois, Illinois State, I have Utah State, I have Nichols State, and I fill out my bracket. And the bottom line, the screen for our net return has the scores scrolling. And I find myself looking at the scores as I'm calling the game and getting angry <laughs> at the fact that I'm getting these games wrong and legitimately angry. And I, I start questioning myself, but dude, you realize you're doing the NCAA tournament and you're worried that you blew it in the East region and that Chris Mad Dog Russo <laughs> is gonna give you guff on Monday. Guff. Hey, I am terrible pick for you. <laughs> so that was it. That was the last time I filled out a bracket. All right, well, don't screw it up. We're uh, all counting you. on you. And then you go from this, then you're hosting the Masters as well. Is that, <laughs> yes. you're doing that yes. too? Yeah. Butler cabin. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Hey, one point can I make? Uh, Jake Gyllenhaal, you mentioned him yesterday, Roadhouse. Yeah. You have a lot of IMDb credits. Yeah. I was actually in Southpaw as reporter number two. Okay. With Jake. Okay. With Jake, with Rachel McAdams, with Fiddy Scent. Uh, Antoine Fuqua was the director. Yeah. And we come out, we do a rehearsal, we do the lines on the page. Fuqua comes out and says, Hey, is that what you would say in a press conference? I said, no. He goes, all right, you just do it your way. And what you see in the film, that's my way. Now that's that, reporter number two way. That role was originally for Jim Nance. And once again, was. you have done a number on Jim Nance's career. <laughs> the fact that you have that minutia at your fingertips and knew it yes. blows me away. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, we're going to be listening now. I know. Now I know. we're really going to be listening. Yes. Yes. My hope is when we do this next year, yeah. you'll have some some calls for me, some calls that are tailored just for me. Todd, so once again, would you give Ian Eagle just a little more of Kevin Harlan? The Jazz are on a 13-4 run. Philadelphia doesn't know what to do. They'll talk things over. This is the NBA on TNT. Is Kevin in the studio? No, I'm that's sorry. Todd. That's Todd. Yeah, he's that good. Oh. Yeah, incredible. It's freaking me out. <laughs> Thank you, Ian. See you, Dan. That's Ian Eagle. CBS, TNT, and TBS, and Yes Network. And oh my gosh, the guy's busy.